Come on and crypto Twitter, it's Misty Crypto Spreading crypto adoption, showing this beneficial to my generation Shout out to all my people, Jesse needs to be included It's really that simple We are savage, amazed, possessed Making money at the same time, spread peace I feel empty if you don't include Gen Z Better change the world, so y'all better get ready Misty Crypto, I'm never backing down I got a wax account, you used to say it What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Missing Crypto Show. I hope you guys are having a lovely day today. We have had an active week on the Missing Crypto Show. This is the fourth show this week with another amazing guest. And as always, before we jump into today's show, we're going to give a shout out to three amazing sponsors of the Missing Crypto Show. First, Wax Blockchain, absolutely killing the game, gas free and instant transactions on the Wax Blockchain for all cool NFTs and play to earn games. If you're looking to buy some NFTs, trade and earn, NFTBlocks.com is a really cool place to go. So visit NFTBlocks.com. Third, we have Ballet. Ballet making awesome wallets, super easy to use. We're going to give away one of these today. So in order to win, you will have to keep, watch out for a keyword or phrase given by today's guest. If I pick you in the comments, just DM me on Twitter with your email address, and I'll send that over to the Ballet team to get you started. I also have, as always, NFTs to share throughout the show. I'll drop one in the chat now, and I'll drop another when we hit 20 likes. So smash that like, subscribe, and share the stream out with friends if you're feeling the zest. Now, let's Let's jump into today's amazing guest, the one and only Didi Taihutu, the father, the leader of the Bitcoin family. How are you doing today? <laughs> wow, shit. That was a really beautiful introduction. I'm feeling very amazing. <laughs> uh, beautiful to be on the show again. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, yeah, let's talk about Bitcoin, uh, blockchain, and a little bit about life. Yeah? <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about life. It's been a while since I had you guys. I don't know if you guys are OG subscribers to the Miss Teen Crypto Show, but Didi was actually my third or fourth interview way back in June of 2021 it's only july of 2022 hasn't been that long but it feels like forever like one year in crypto is seven years of real life is how it feels <laughs> and i can't believe just what's been happening in both of our lives since we last caught up but you know for people that may not know you which is kind of crazy because they should everyone should but do you mind giving a little bit of an intro to who you are and what the bitcoin family essentially means uh, I will give a, a short intro. I am, uh, my name is Didi. You know, I have a do three daughters and a wife. And in 2013, I started mining Bitcoin. And when I had the first crash in 2014, I switched to mining Dogecoin at that time. Um, a few years later, I was reminded that I still had some Bitcoins and Dogecoin and the community was growing. It was in 2017 and I started to believe in the revolution more and more and the, the change of the complete monetary system. And um, we decided as a family at that moment to sell everything we own. So we sold our house, our company, our bikes, our holiday home, all the cars, the motors. And then we went all into Bitcoin. We took the pension funds. And after that, we started to travel the world. The media called uh, like us and they were like, what are you doing? You're going all in. That's risky. You're crazy. You're a lunatic. Yeah. And But you're the Bitcoin family. And since then, now six years later, we have been traveling the world already for six years as a family, uh, 44 countries by now, um, living the Bitcoin line 24 seven, no bank account already for five years, all in. Wow. And we will always stay, stay all in, you know? We love deflation. We hate yep. inflation. <laughs> I feel that we were just talking about inflation before the show and it's it's hitting us hard right now like absolutely the worst especially um, in New York it's crazy and it's something that I can't believe I'm living through just seeing prices double triple and just seeing like the purchasing power going down when did you like you know I I know we talked about it a little bit like a year ago on the stream but just to dive into like what really what really drew you to Bitcoin was it that deflationary aspect did you see the potential of fiat just dwindling in dominance 
Uh, like the beginning when I started mining Bitcoin, it was more the, the monetary aspect because at that moment I was still a young guy wanting to become a millionaire and uh, Bitcoin could make me a millionaire while at the same time, I'm, same time I would disrupt the whole, um, you know, central banks and all the systems, which I didn't like too much. So it was uh, two flies in one hit at that moment. And after you go um, all in and edu educate you more and more, it becomes a revolution, a peaceful revolution, like my T-shirt is saying, instead of um, a monetary revolution and making money or earning or becoming a millionaire. You know, that's, that's, that's not the goal in our lives anymore. Um, the goal is really supporting Bitcoin for the change it can bring to our world. And I think we need that change. And at the moment that I went all in, I, I started to see year after year that my life became more cheap. So where everybody was complaining about, ah, we have 3% inflation. Oh, now we have 10% inflation. I'm like, man, I have deflation. My capital is exactly. growing with an average of 100% a year. Yeah, maybe the hamburger is 10% more expensive, but I, I'm still 90% in, and plus if you calculate the right way. So what, why aren't you going all in, in Bitcoin? And, and I still don't understand why everybody still has bank accounts and, 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 and has part of their income or capital in fiat currencies. I really just don't understand. It blows my mind. Um, but you know, that's why we need to educate more and more people. That's why I'm still doing these uh, shows to educate. Exactly. It, being completely bankless, you said you haven't had a bank account for how long now? Five years. Now. Five yeah. years. And how is that? Has that been a lot easier for you, especially in the last year or two? I feel like it's been easier to spend crypto. Do you feel or has it been the same? It, no, it has really it, it became way more easy than it was in the beginning. Of course, you know, in the beginning, we still needed to use local Bitcoins.com, meet people on the street, do OTC deals, all that dangerous stuff. Nowadays, it's like most of the things I do, I can pay directly with Bitcoin. This house that I'm staying in, um, I rented it for a year. I paid this with Bitcoin. The car, I bought it with Bitcoin. The airplane, the flights, I paid it with Bitcoin. You know, groceries, for example, we still do use the crypto.com for example debit card when we need it eh? but but mostly we do otc deals so uh, we sell bitcoins for cash non-kyc use the cash to do groceries sometimes um but more and more online shopping can be done by bitcoin as well so the use of cash is really disappearing and i think we need to make it disappear because i think the governments worldwide want cash to dis disappear yeah so um for me yeah, no, Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies is still peer-to-peer -peer cash and it will evolve to that more and more. Um, while at the same time, it's a sort of value that is deflationary that makes yourself, um, your life more cheap every year. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a simple calculation for me, but it's very difficult for most people because they are afraid that it will crash to zero. Exactly. And what do you say when people say like, oh, Bitcoin can go to zero? Like, come on, man. I, I if it goes to zero, I will buy all 21 million Bitcoins. Literally. <laughs> it's, no. it's, it's crazy that, you know, I, I, I feel you 100%. I don't feel the need to have, like, I pretty much don't have a bank account. Like, I have, like, enough fiat to, like, maybe go, like, you know, grocery shopping, get my nails done, whatever I need to do, like, go buy my essentials. But essentially, I don't really need a bank account. Why, why so, would you? Yeah, so the, the thing is, like, I, I, I'm kind of lying because I'm using crypto.com, you know, and, and they have a bank account connected to your card over there. So that yeah. maybe that maybe it's a new bank, but I'm not, use, not even using that bank uh, option. But for me, um, you know, it's, it's crypto has evolved into this game for, for people to try to buy the bottom, sell the top. Yeah. It is not about the revolution anymore. It's just by when do you buy, when do you sell? And what I try to educate people is when you're all in like me, you will always be buying and selling. Why? Because I'm spending my Bitcoins at 70K. I'm spending Bitcoins at 60K. I'm spending Bitcoins at 50, 40, 30K, 20K, but I'm also earning Bitcoins at 20K, 30K, 40, 50. So automatically dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and out of Bitcoin. So yeah. I don't need to worry anymore about do I catch the top or the bottom because I'm living the Bitcoin standard, which means sometimes you spend a little bit more expensive, sometimes you spend a little bit more cheap, but on average you spend cheaper all the time. So, yeah. but that's, it's, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know why people 
don't understand that fully. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people are scared of being their own bank. And I mean, yeah. it is a big responsibility, especially when people maybe have like a substantial amount of Bitcoin that they're just it's it's a lot of money. It's a lot of responsibility. And how do you how do you like approach, you know, people when they ask you, like, you know, how can you even function without a bank account? What is how do you keep track of like all your, you know, codes and whatever you may need to self custody? Yeah. So yeah, we, we have our system in this, of course, and it's not, you know, it's, it's not the easiest way. Let's be honest. No. It's not easy to be all in Bitcoin. You need to do your, um, uh, you need to be aware of that. Your wall, uh, you have your protections in, in safes, you know, your wallets and everything and the keys and everything. So we have a whole strategy for that, but, um, I feel the same about my fiat. You know, I, I don't trust banks. Yes, I'm insured to 100,000 US dollars. No, our capital is luckily a little bit more than that. So what if the bank falls? What is, where is my money then? Can I get, oh, 100K in five years time? What can I do with that 100K? Can I buy this bottle of water because of the inflation? Or what? So for me, I feel more unsafe in the bank than I feel with my ledgers like near me. And, and then we have the system that we have ledgers all over the world. Um, so we are always close. It's always a maximum three or a flight to one of these ledgers. So we can always, in the worst case scenario, if we would need to um, get access to the 70% of our um, stack or our huddle portfolio, because 70% I can't reach at the moment. It would take me three hours to five hours now to get to my 70% of Bitcoins. Yeah. Uh, 30% I, I live with, I huddle, I trade, I invest, but the rest, it will be there still when it's 2000, the year 2030. You know, that's that's my long term. Let's call it pension fund or whatever it is. I mean, yeah. yeah, I I don't see why if I if I was a person that had like a 401k or was investing and you know giving a stockbroker or somebody money, I wouldn't do that. I would just why wouldn't I just buy Bitcoin myself? huddle it myself and just DCA into the market. I just, I think I agree with you too, that I just don't trust third parties anymore. It's hard, like, especially during the lockdowns and stuff here, banks were closed. You could only withdraw 500 bucks from the ATM. What if I needed to pay rent with cash? What if I needed to get, a, what if I had an emergency? I needed cash, I just wasn't able to get it. And now I don't know if you see it where you are right now in Portugal, but there's bank locations closing left and right. You know, safety deposit box, they'll send you a letter and say, yo, you have three days to come and get your safety deposit <laughs> box and everything in it or it's, else it's ours. So what- You know, it's, 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 I think people don't realize what is happening in the world because they are too actively being busy with working and making money to even survive because of this whole inflation story. But you know, there was an article in Bloomberg, I think it was a, a week ago, that in the UK, for example, all paper notes of 50 and 20 pounds are going to be withdrawn from the market. So that's $40.8 billion worth of paper notes that they're going to take out of the market, which means they still have these plastic notes, but not the paper notes anymore. For me, this is just a test. This is a test to see how will people react to um, wanting to withdraw cash from the world. Let's test, let's test it with these paper notes that are not that um, clean anymore, whatever, and see how the people react. And then they will go step by step. So at the end, uh, I think the world will go cashless. You know, your your of generation, course. my daughter's generation, they don't use cash. They use their telephone, their card, whatever, to be digital. Um, and and that, that's the future. And that is what you see on the streets. Banks don't have at the ATMs anymore. <clears throat> if you have a bar or a restaurant in the Netherlands, for example, um, if you do the revenue of the weekend and you need to bring it to the bank, you can't even go into the bank anymore but you need to do it in this machine on the street. You know, that is not like really safe anymore. So yeah. these restaurants, they will say in the future, ah, no cash payment anymore, just by car. So slowly, I think um, cash will uh, disappear from our world. And, and you know, the future can be completely different. And we did those steps already from, from coins, you know, to, to all the way to PayPal and magic internet money. And now we go to cryptocurrency. Um, so people just need to um, get used to it. And for me, the bet is Bitcoin as, 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 as the only decentralized one, but I, I believe it still has a huge role in the world in maybe even becoming the world reserve currency. You know, we had the dollar now for 111 yep. years. 
I think every real world reserve currency has been replaced between 80 and 120 years. We know that Bitcoin will take another 120 years to reach the last Bitcoin ever mined. So what if Bitcoin would be the next world reserve currency for the next 120 years? It would be the perfect one because that would be the moment the last Bitcoin would be mined. So there are so many possibilities. Uh, you know, it's uh, everybody does it in a different way. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. And for me, it's just uh, the Bitcoin standard way and for you as well. Yes, I'm with you. And. Uh, Global adoption. I mean, you've been traveling so much. Where do you feel has, have you seen the most adoption, most people transacting in Bitcoin? Because I, I, a lot of people, even um, where I live, they're not accepting cash. People don't even have change anymore, Didi. Like I'm going to the store, they round up to the next dollar. Um, there's always like that extra charge back on the card too. I try to use my card and they're like, oh, well, it's an extra dollar or two because you're using your card. So it's just uh, trouble. Yeah, trouble. It's so for for me it's a, I, I experience the same you know all over the world and I make YouTube videos and we do Twitter and we do all the social media stuff but there is something that doesn't reach the people completely they still don't understand so that is why now in Portugal I said to myself okay I'm going to do it different this time I will open the Bitcoin beach bar on the beach in Portugal and show them that they can pay with Bitcoin and educate them and just show them how easy it is to use, uh, you know, a lightning, uh, the lightning network, the blue wallet or whatever, moon wallet, whatever wallet they want to. And now in the last four days, we opened four days ago, 50, 50, 50% 50 is paying with Bitcoin, 50% wow. is paying with cash. We don't accept cards. We don't accept Visa. We don't accept MasterCard. It's cash or crypto. And with that, I just try to show the people, look how easy crypto is. You don't need cash. You just scan the QR code, you pay, and bam, it's done. It's like one second, no fees on, on the Lightning Network. And <clears throat> the Bitcoiners that are coming to the bar at the moment, they're all like, finally, we can try it, you know? Exactly. There's not enough places to play. And they, they love it. They're like, wow, okay, they make videos. So for me, it is a, the, at the moment, you know, yeah, after three years YouTubing, interviews and all that stuff, I was like, I still didn't reach those people. The people just still don't understand it. So let's do it the other way around. Simple steps, step by step. I will open this beach bar. Um, by now already, I converted uh, four restaurants on the same beach to accept Bitcoins as well. Nice. The sailing, yeah, the sailing club is also accepting Bitcoins. So we have now five places on one of the biggest tourist beaches in Europe that is accepting Bitcoin. So this is going to be, in my opinion, I'm going to convert it to Bitcoin Beach Europe. This is going to be the biggest beach wow. in Europe accepting Bitcoin, you know, and it's not like on food stand, it's all beach bars and restaurants accepting Bitcoins. Uh, and then you show people the power of Bitcoin. You know, it's, we can read books, we can do videos. There is something that doesn't click in people's brain till they do it and they need exactly. to experience it. That's I what I'm trying to do now. I'm with you. The, how it clicked for me was when my dad and I first did my first Bitcoin transaction. I saw how easy it was to use. You scan a QR code, copy and paste yeah. an address, and that's it. Anyone anywhere in the world, whether they're right in front of you or on the other side of the world, can send and receive payments instantly. Yeah. So what are you? So you're accepting only Bitcoin and Lightning using Lightning Network right now, or? Yeah. Right now we are, but um, because there's a lot of options, of course, to, to accept other cryptocurrencies, but I want to involve the community in Portugal. So mm -hmm. now I'm talking to these uh, communities here in, in Lisbon and in uh, Portimao, and they want to build something that um, also altcoins can be accepted and everything. But, yes. you know, I want to interact with the, with the people in Portugal. So let's come, let's talk, let's create this hub, crypto hub on the beach. And yeah, let, let's see if we can create something really cool. Uh, uh, to, where people can uh, dump their last Luna tokens or whatever they need to dump for a Bacardi <laughs> Coke, you know? it's uh, At least they get a little bit. Spend their sheep it. and their doge uh, and get a Coke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for example. <laughs> that's, um, that's really cool. So you're accepting light. So it's over lightning. It's all over lightning network. Um, uh, we have a, a project from the Netherlands that we're using. It's called Bitcasa, which Bit means, um, yeah, so all the transactions are Ne neatly done in the ledger and everything it's because i also want to show the portugal government it's 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 an official way to accept a currency uh, and, and it's not like multi-level marketing it's not scammy it's not trying to avoid paying taxes you know it's a ledger <laughs> so yeah. the, it's the best ledger ever and, and you can see whatever transaction came in so um yeah it's a it's it's a game for me um it's another passion for me to convert more and more people into understanding bitcoin 
Um, but yeah, that's uh, let's see. It's uh, the Lightning Network till now. People are amazed how fast it works. It's like lightning speed. It's forty thousand exactly. transactions per second. So that's like forty times more than Visa or Mastercard uh, can do. You know, that's uh, really that's massive. Yeah, that's massive. Absolutely. And when you talk to these business owners, how do you open up this conversation? Um, how do you like, did you say like, okay, I'm doing it to like, it's proof of concept or you just like start off by explaining what Bitcoin is? How do you approach them? So I'm, I'm lucky to have some uh, news uh, articles, you know, on CNBC and all this stuff. So, yeah. so they already know that I'm here and they already are visiting my bar and they're like, I, what are you doing? Yes, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm accepting Bitcoin. And so they came themselves and I cool. educated them. And that's how they now start to accept Bitcoin because the community in Portugal, it's grown tremendously, you know. Portugal is the last country in Europe with 0% tax on Bitcoin. So a lot of European Bitcoin millionaires and billionaires are moving to Portugal and they want to spend their Bitcoins. There is even a garage over here. It's a very beautiful garage. It's called Platinum Cars. They accept direct payments of Bitcoins. I educated them to, because they needed to do with official to use Bitso. So their Bitcoins are transacted into their bank account automatically. Just uh, um, But you can pay the Lamborghini there or the Porsche or whatever you want with Bitcoins. And they now experience, oh, this is very simple. Yep. We don't lose value because it's still, you know, it's still exchanged into their euros because they feel safe. And by now already, they are converting only 90% into euros and 10%. They will huddle in Bitcoin and that will slowly shift. And I think it's such a small step to, to, to as an influencer, take the time to go to a bar, sit there and educate them, give 10 minutes of your day, you know? And as, I think that should. is a, yeah, that's the shift we need. You know, we are now all, Sadly, I think we are all too focused on um, um, earning too much money ourselves yep. uh, to be able to buy that Lamborghini, at least a lot of us. And, and I think we should spend some more time on the, you know, on the beach, on the floor, where the, where the people need to be educated to accept Bitcoins. But, you know, it's, who am I to, to tell what we should do and not shouldn't do? You know, I'm also just a long haired dude with a peaceful revolution Bitcoin shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. You're you're doing amazing. And I really like that you're, you know, you're cool and you're willing to take the time out and talk to these store owners and actually just onboard them. A lot of people are just new to the space. They're scared. They don't understand, but you're bringing it to them um, and them coming to you. What what has been like, you know, what's their first question when they come to you? Like, what is Bitcoin or they're aware of Bitcoin already and they just want to know how to accept it? So by now, the first question always is, wow, but it's so volatile. Am I going to lose all my money? That's mm -hmm. the question. Now at the always. Moment. So yeah. then I, that's the, the first question. I open the, open the laptop. I show them the charts. I tell them to zoom out, to check how Bitcoin evolved from 2009 all the way now to 2022 and how we increased with an average of 120% a year. And um, so that they don't need to worry about this daily volatility, volatility. You know, that, that, that's what they see on the news. You know, Bitcoin is crashing again. Like Bitcoin crashed 70%. We just did a run of over 2,000%. Can, can we crash with, with 70%, please? It's uh, only healthy. Uh, it, it's a healthy correction. And, but it freaks those people out because mm. they read the news and they see the news. Um, and I just educate them. Um, then don't do the risk that I'm taking all in. But take only 20% in Bitcoin. And the rest you exchange through your fiat or whatever you want. And if they do that, then they see the result. So they, if, if I paid them 100 euro, like 20 euro goes into Bitcoin, mm -hmm. 80 euros goes into a bank account. And then after a month, they see that those 20 euros in Bitcoin is equal to that 80 euro in the bank account. And then they're like, oh shit, this is also increasing in value. I, I, should, I should do more in Bitcoin, you know? And that's, slowly they will understand um, that's the way to go. But um, yeah, it will take time, it will take time, like always. Exactly. And for your business in particular, you started, so the name of it is Bam Bam Beach. Yeah, Bam Bam Beach. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to your Twitter for it in the chat. It's because uh, um, uh, during my YouTube videos, I always said Bam. And then bam. people said, man, yeah, Bam. And then they said, Didi, you need to make it Bam Bam Beach. And it's Bitcoin Beach Lagos is in, in small letters below it. Um, People love the name. Yeah, they love to say Bam at the bar. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's the name, you know. I love it. I love Bam. Bam, Bam. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> freaking awesome. I mean, I could I yeah. could picture people partying and be like, Bam, bro. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, I feel they it. all added. It's, it's a lot of bam bam songs at the moment in the charts, so uh, uh, they are all asking these songs over and over again. There's one of this, uh, oh, this, this Spanish singer with, uh, and and it's a, it's a catchy song, and she sings bam 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 bam. So they all want to hear the song all day. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Wait, oh, oh, speaking of amazing things, let's give out a cool ballet wallet. Do you mind giving our friends in the chat a? word or phrase for them to enter i need to give him a chat a word or a phrase for them to enter in your chat or which chat they uh, they give? enter uh so whatever word or phrase you give me they're going to enter into the chat and then i can roll um my bot over here and ah, they'll pick a winner for okay me. Ah. deflation <laughs> deflation okay friends so Put inflation into the chat or deflation into the chat, not inflation. Put deflation in the chat and to enter <laughs> to win a ballet wallet. I'll roll in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm like typing it so slow. Um, oh, hi, Ken Bozak in the chat. Another friend, another OG. But yeah, deflation, something we really have to focus on. So <laughs> at the bar, um, when you're like, you know, looking at all the prices of the food and everything like that, how do you feel about the inflation in Portugal? Uh, I know we were talking about it a little bit before the show. Yeah, I, I don't think it's like Portugal is really cheap to live. It's a bear market country. Like you can go either to Thailand or, 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 or Indonesia or, for example, Portugal. They, we are cheap. You know, we pay an, an, a coffee in, in the local bar is still like 50 cents, 60 cents. Uh, the coffee's in my bar. It's a beach bar. It's like one euro fifty. So it's, it's almost one dollar fifty. Um, so Portugal is a cheap country to live. You know, I I, I rent this beautiful house with uh, six bedrooms, uh, two hundred meters from the sea. It's it's around two um, k a month. What? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are That's one of insane. the biggest tourist places of, of 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 Portugal. Lagos is one of the I think the number one place in Portugal to live. Um, so it's also a little bit more expensive place. Uh, if, if you go for dinner in Portugal, we went yesterday with five of us and do a fish restaurant. My wife and I eat fish. The kids had a hamburger. Yes, I know a hamburger in a fish restaurant, but it's puber kids. And uh, when I had the pizza, we had some desserts, we had the drinks, coffee and all the stuff. I think it was not even 70 euros, you know, it's That's like- insane. Um, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So, it's not expensive to live over here. So that's, uh, yeah, my Bitcoins uh, have their value. Yeah. $2,000 a month to rent a beautiful house with six bedrooms. Didi, during NFT NYC, and it was in Times Square, yeah. if you wanted to get a hotel for four nights, it was over $2,000. Oh my God. No. And that's, that's for four that's, nights, that's, not a month nah, in a beautiful mansion. What? Yeah, let's. Not yeah, a mansion, but like no. a beautiful house. Wow. I call it it's a mansion a compared house. to like the little houses I see in Brooklyn that are literally like yeah. tear downs, like two bedrooms <laughs> and are a million dollars. So you can, you can make it. You can make it more expensive in Portugal as well. We have these big ass villas here. You can rent them for five thousand a month, or, or you know, if, that's if still you, cheap. But I know it's it is Relatively. July August is a little bit more expensive because it's summer season. Um, but my house is, is it's it's a big house. I think I have a garden of, uh, what is it? 2,000, 3,000 square meters. Um, wow. uh, so it's 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 not a lot of money um, to rent a beautiful house over here. Yeah, it's, you should visit me. Just fly here and I have a spare room and then we make some cool content here on the beach. <laughs> I would love to, that would be so fun. I, I, I would love to just like experience like the, the Bitcoin family life for like a few days and just see like, you know, the daily, how you guys run the bar and like how it, it all operates. It's just so interesting to me. It's, 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 it's so many people can see it because we have been already followed now for a year by a camera crew and they're going to follow us another eight months wow. um, and it's going to be a documentary on the biggest streaming platform of the world i can't say the name i, I need to sign in uh, it's solely about our family what, what we have been doing the last years and then what we are how we live how we educate how we think uh, how we have drama <laughs> with people yeah. kids, uh, um, a little so reality yeah, that, show there is going yeah there is going to be something really cool soon um it will 
be really cool for the masses to see, you know, what, what a Bitcoin life looks like. And not only YouTuber people, but also people that look at the bigger streaming platforms of the world um, to, to see what is the Bitcoin family like. Exactly. Wow. That that's actually really cool. Good for you guys. Just I yeah. would it's literally like, you know, the cooler version of the Kardashians, just like the, the Bitcoin family, just what what you guys are up to and your journey. It's just really important to yeah. share just how it's possible. So many people doubt it. So many people are like, no, you know, you can't live off of Bitcoin. How can you even spend Bitcoin? You can't do anything with it. Well, you guys are definitely just proving all of them wrong and just living proof, especially, you know, bam, bam. Like that's a business that you guys are running using Bitcoin yeah. and cryptocurrency. Is it, yeah. this is the, like, um, during, you know, like the show or the movie you're filming, are we going to see like the progress of how it all came to be like the business? So the, the, the beach bar, not, but other things. Yes. But the okay. beach bar was just something that happened to me in the last month. You know, this guy calls what? me and he's like, yeah, he called me and I was in the Netherlands uh, and he called me and he's like, did he there in Portugal on this beach that I really, it's Maya Praia. It's the biggest beach uh, um, of this area. And he said, there's one beach bar for sale. Uh, would you like to do something with me? And he was this beach guy that does the beach beds and all that stuff. And I told him, yes, I will invest, but it needs to be a Bitcoin beach bar, you know? And if yep. we do that, I'm all in. And he directly said yes. So I flew there and we started it and we saw that we and we just opened four days ago. It, and, and I think in three weeks times we set everything up and it's opened. It's going to be uh, printed and everything like uh, the, the banners and everything. Are they are printing all, everything now. So there's going to be cool. huge Bitcoin flags and all that stuff. And there's a lot of uh, cool stuff that we already are thinking of, but we still need to do it because it was all a last minute job. But uh, in a week or something, I think it will look really cool. And I, I, I had a really cool chat with CNBC about it as well, two or three days ago, because they were like, okay. what are you doing now? You're like, so yeah, it's a, I, I think it's going to be an awesome place. Um, the last four days, a lot of Bitcoiners came. They, they drove two hours from Lisbon and from everywhere to here to wow. just experience it. And 50-50 um, at the moment, so 50% pays with Bitcoin, 50% uh, pays with uh, uh, cash at the moment. So uh, yeah, we need to change that to 100% Bitcoin, but it, it will take also some time for the people. Wow, that's amazing. So you literally started Bam Bam Beach Bar in a month. It's it's literally, I think the Instagram was open like in the Twitter account a week or 10 days ago because it was like really last minute. It just came into my life. It was not planned. We were just traveling. We wanted thing, to go so. from... It came and I said, you know, my wife and I decided once uh, a long time ago, let's say yes to all these things that come to us in life. You know, every time we say yes, we have a new adventure. Every time we say no, we block an adventure. Yeah. So I just said, yes, I will come there. I fly there. Let's see. And then, and that is how it happened. And, um, you know, I had a chat with the guy. It clicked. And yeah, it's, it's, it, it's ridiculous how it took place, but it is there now. And it's, uh, I, I'm really having fun, you know. Um, every day I'm on the beach in the morning and setting up the beds and working real hard. It's the first time in life I have some blisters. I never <laughs> experienced that before. <laughs> but wow. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Wow, I'm really happy for you. And especially because you're, I, I really admire the courage you have and your wife just to be able to take that leap and say, okay, this is our next adventure and just take life as it goes. And most importantly, teaching that to your kids that it's okay to not have that necessarily like stability. I mean, um, speaking as someone that has seen people have the same routine for 40 plus years, wake up in the morning, drink their coffee, go to work, come back at 5 p.m., eat dinner, go to sleep, wait till Friday so they could go out and have a late night dinner. Then they go home and then the week starts again. Yeah. You guys aren't living that life. And I think it's so important to not have that necessarily stability and just to live day by day because you have had that, you know, nine to five work yeah. mentality before. Yeah, of course. I, I I was an entrepreneur. I built up businesses and all that stuff. So I had employees and everything. But, you know, at the end, um, that stability that everybody is believing in or seeing in, that is not a stability anymore. You know, last two years we experienced that all That's the stability true. we had was disrupted just by just you know, something, a flu or whatever it was, you know. Uh, so what is stability? 
you know, I prefer flexibility <laughs> because exactly. flexibility makes it possible for me that if something happens that I don't like, I can just move to another country and experience some other adventure over there. So that is more stability in my life because I know I'm flexible. For me, that feels very stable. It's very strange to, to, to say it like that, but the, no, the, the fact that is. I'm flexible, yeah, it, it makes me just feel, wow, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. And however I want, I don't need to, you know, load up bricks of gold or empty a bank account. I can just travel with my telephone and my ledger to another country and start to spend it over there. So for me, that's, the, the, yeah, that, that's stability over there, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Flexibility is the real stability. For me, it is because if you're flexible, whatever a government or a bank presents you, you can you will be able to accept it or not accept it by leaving. And I think that's for me uh, more stable than being forced into doing stuff that you don't want to do. Uh, that that's not stability. That's like prison. You are yeah. amazing. Didi, you are amazing. I'm nah. with you. And where, so since the pandemic has started, what countries have you hit? Where have you gone um, before Portugal? Um, all the countries where there was no pandemic. So, um, exactly. we, so where was Portugal, that? Portugal was not that bit much pandemic, to be very honest. They had some rules, but, you know, um, the people need to make money. So they didn't live up to the rules. Mm. Mexico, we spent two times, um, uh, four months. Because Mexico, I think COVID didn't exist or something. I don't know what happened over there, but there was everything just completely normal. We could party, New Year's Eve, Christmas. We had huge, uh, a, a huge festival live over there. You know, everything was open, live music, yeah. everything. So uh, we spent those months over there. The, the first seven months of the whole uh, worldwide craze, we were in Thailand. There was also nada. I lived on the beach. I could do whatever I want. So yeah. we kind of didn't really experience um, that whole situation of, of being locked down or locked up. That's we, good. We just, we just, you know, yeah, rode the wave in between and just had a normal life. Um, but I still feel very sorry for all the people that were affected or, you know, people that died. You know, it, it, it was a... It has been something that uh, we never had expected and all the regulations they brought because of it, we didn't ever expect that as well. We could have never believed two years ago that you would um, need to be vaccinated or wear a face mask to go into a restaurant or McDonald's, which is, in my opinion, also very unhealthy, the McDonald's, but apparently... Yeah. <laughs> It's a guilty pleasure for all of us. <laughs> okay, yeah, for all of us. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, there's so many things happen. And I, I'm looking forward to the next couple of years of a little bit less of that uh, stressy feeling and more community again. But um, let's see Absolutely. what happens the next winter. I, I'm, I'm in agreement. I need to feel that community vibe again. And just now things are kind of starting to feel good again. We're able to go out, especially in New York. Things were very hard. And now like things are very easy going. And I hope it stays this way because, you know, even like, you know, having the flexibility to travel like you dig and taking, you know, a lot of people do actually have the flexibility to travel, but they don't take the leap and actually yeah. leave and their home. And w was that like something that was like, you know, nerve wracking for you, especially at the beginning, because you had like, you know, you had your set house, you had, you know, your cars and you had your life kind of started, you had your foundation yeah. there and then you sold everything you dipped. So was that hard for you at the beginning? No, of course it was hard for me. I was a normal guy, you know, I was educated in the nineties. I was educated that, um, you know, uh, happiness was found in becoming very wealthy and having a lot of cars and houses. And mm. they educated me wrong, you know, uh, happiness is found in living life. But at that point for me, it was a very big jump. It was something that I didn't know. I didn't know if it would succeed. I didn't know um, if, if I would call flexibility stability, because at that moment, stability for me was for me as well. Well, a house, a company, all that stuff. Um, but because of life and my father dying and my mother already died, uh, I started to understand that how rich I would be or how stable my life would be. There is also always that factor that can just shake up your life like this. Exactly. If it is losing your parents or your grandmother or it's losing your dog, whatever it is, it can change like this, losing your job, everything. So if you think you're living this very stable life, 
there is only one thing needed to make it unstable and make you depress it. So for me, that was at that moment, the, the, the point that my father died after a year of cancer. It was like, what is this? My dad thought he could work his whole life to go with a pension at 65 and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. He didn't. He didn't do that last part. He did enjoy his life, of course, but not like he intended he to, to at the end. So for me, it was like, I'm going to change this. You know, when you're 25, till you're 65, those magic 40 years, you're physical, able to travel the world, to jump off a, out of an airplane, to go diving, to go skiing, to whatever you want to do you want to do. So why would I spend those 40 years behind the desk? Yeah. And then maybe have the chance to be able, when I'm 65, to walk on the beach. You know, that. I thought, let's turn it around. And that's why it made it more easy for me to take that leap, because I really was afraid of not living life anymore to the fullest. Thank you for being how you are, because a lot of people <laughs> think I'm crazy for having that ideology where you have to just live life. You can't wait to sit there and enjoy yourself later because you might not get the chance to. Just like how people are concerned with Bitcoin price action now, like they're consumed with the price action. And like you said, not concerned with the revolution and being your own bank and having money that you have control over. So I don't understand that they are still consumed with the price action of Bitcoin while they are not consumed with the inflation with of their fiat money. An average inflation of 4% in 30 years is 120% inflation. That's 120% less buying power by just keeping your money in euros. Why don't they freak out about this? Why do they freak out about the inflation or the deflation of Bitcoin while well, they should be freaking out about not be... They, they can all now physically see when they go now to a restaurant they can buy less with the same amount of dollars that they could buy last year. So now they, they can see their money is losing value. But people don't so understand inflation. Understand? Like, and then uh, they're like, oh yeah, but yeah. you know, it's only a dollar more or it's only a few dollars more until that adds up. Until yeah. like now yeah. where a lot of people are approaching the point where they're just like, wow, like I have a hundred dollars and I can't do jack with it. Like really, you can't you yeah. can't even like eat for a week with a hundred dollars yeah. anymore. I went to the grocery store, barely bought anything, bought a few cold cuts, a few eggs, you yeah. know, whatever. It was a like hundred bucks. <laughs> it's good. It was like a hundred fifty yeah. bucks for yeah. basically nothing. Yeah. So you know, and it's crazy. Like people are concerned about you know price action instead of freedom and having flexibility and having that state of mind that you have where you know you're just dealing with reality as it comes and being able to free yourself from all of these barriers that people essentially create for themselves yeah and at the same time they need to understand if they look at my twitter the the, the top tweet is um you know that um they can only control you when you use their money so at the same time when you don't use those people's money that want to control you, you also experience a little bit more freedom. So for me, it's a double plus, but you know, it's, um, it's, it's not for everyone. It's for me, it is. And some people just don't like it and they need to understand that in the, in the end, they will also be using it and they will slowly move into this. Like yeah. my grandma slowly moved into using a plastic card in the wall to withdraw money, you know, that she, she didn't do it for 10 years till she needed to, you know? Yeah, they're that's just going to have we'll to go be. every time again. Yeah, they're just going to have to at <laughs> my some point. My daughters are coming home. That's Gina coming home and my wife is coming home. <laughs> <laughs> now she's chilling. I, I, I hope um, I hope we, they could actually come on the show one day and hang out and like have the whole family on. It would be great to talk to you guys and your yeah, brother. we'd love to and your brother, right? I think I saw that you tweeted something about your brother selling his house and he was kind of now he's kind of like pulling a DD, right? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he, uh, we we um, in December they were in Holland and they had the lockdown in the Netherlands. <clears throat> and I flew my sister and my brother to with their families. With, they were nine people to Mexico. I told them I will pay the flights. I will have a big house. I fly you over. We do Christmas, New Year in Mexico. Oh, that's awesome. and let's talk. <clears throat> and then they came there and then I told them, this is the last time I'm going to talk to you about Bitcoin. If you don't go all in now, please never, never speak to me again about Bitcoin. And <laughs> we started and then we started to chat and they were like, should I sell my house? They said, you know, we just had a top. There will be a bear market soon. If you sell your house now, 
you can take your money, wait for the bottom, buy in, and do the same thing I did. So he did. He put his house directly for sale in Mexico. It was sold a few weeks later. Um, he sold the top of the house market because that one is exploding in the Netherlands at the moment, you know. Now that the interest is increasing in the United States, the walls are increasing in Europe, the prices of the house will go down. So he sold the top of the house market. Uh, and the 1st of July, yes, today he, uh, he went to the notary to do the signing of the house and he's receiving the money. He bought a camper van. He drove now with the camper van up to Spain and now he's waiting for Monday morning um, to have a chat with me when to buy or dollar cost average into Bitcoin. And then he's going to go all in. And Ooh. I think in my opinion, between now and 20, 2024, 25, um, Bitcoin will go times seven. Um, so 140K must be reachable. So that means his capital in the next three years will go times seven, um, which will make him financially independent uh, in this next world and again. So yeah, for me, it's such an easy calculation. And, and he finally was there to believe me. My sister is also selling her uh, her house, Whoa. so now you have seen all all of them in there. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, they are all because they, you know, call it leading by example, whatever it is. When they have seen you doing it like this with three children, and slowly they will all start to understand that it's possible. And you know why it's possible? Because technology is changing so rapidly that in the future, um, possession. Um, or ownership will be heavily overrated. Mm -hmm. We don't need to own anything anymore. We can use a scooter from A to B and scan it with the QR code and just pay those kilometers. We will be able to do it with cars. We will be able to do it with taxis. We will be able to do it with houses. We will be able to do with everything we want to use in the future because we have the tools to develop that stuff. We Absolutely. have the blockchain, we have cryptocurrency. AI can now pay each other. Two robots that are not able to have a bank account can have a Bitcoin wallet and pay each other. Yes. It can be a bike to a car or a car to a house. And I think in the far future, these things will all be own entities. A house will be an own entity. A car yes. will be an own entity. And it will be paid in crypto and it will pay the repairs in crypto to the robot again. It's repairing the car. It's a far futuristic future. But if you know that we are going there and at the same time you hear all these people in the European Union saying, by 2030, you will be happy, but you won't own anything. Yeah. Apparently, the government wants the same. So just sell all that materialistic stuff, put it in capital, let the capital work for you, make it three to four percent on average a month, and with that money, the three to four percent a month you make, you rent yourself a house, you buy your groceries, and you don't yeah. even work. That's wow. how I educate my brother and my sister, and they are taking the leap now, and I'm very happy that they um, believe me. But if Bitcoin crashes to zero, they will kill me. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> then then you're, they're going to disown you as a brother. That's it. But I think it's extremely courageous of them as well to, you know, want to admit that they, ha they should follow in your footsteps. That's just, you know, a lot of people might be stubborn and take the other way and be like, no, like, you know, I'm not, I'm still not doing it. Yeah. But no, they admitted, they're like, okay, Didi, you were, you got it. You were right. We're going to do the same and follow your lead. I think that's, I give them a lot of credit for doing that because not a lot of people would. Um, so you got to give them credit for that. And especially, you know, I think the last show um, that when you came on, we were talking about, you know, NFTs and like how we were just talking about just now too. how, you know, a lot of things are going to be on the blockchain. one friend in the chat um, was talking about transfer of home, home ownership via NFTs. This is going to this is going to be a reality for sure. So for me, it's very simple. You know, it's you now you have a scoop because I didn't tell anyone this yet. The beach bar that we have now, it's the Bam Bam Beach. You know, it's owned by me and my companion, but the ultimate goal is to tokenize the whole bar. You know, I want this bar to be owned by the crypto community. You know, in the future, I want 50,000 people worldwide to have a very small piece of the Bam Bam Beach Bar or maybe multiple Bam Bam Beach Bars. And then we decide through a DAO, will we use that color of chairs? Will we use those meetups, which people will speak at our meetups, but it will be community owned. Um, so that's the next step, I think, for this. I'm also um, next step will be a village here in Portugal, which is completely decentralized. It's called Blockchain Village. Website is already online. 
And so we're searching for land now. We will build 25 houses, self-sufficient with Bitcoin miners, everything included, where we will tokenize it and decentralize uh, real estate. Um, we're working there together with a Dubai company, PropChain, that will fr fractionalize real estate for us. And uh, just to show the world that decentralized living is not always something bad. It can be beautiful if a community owns a beach bar, and it can be beautiful if a community owns a village and shares the revenue of that village or the bar. And that's what we, you know, I, I'm just trying step by step to, to show the world or my world and the small part what is possible with, with these tools. Because it's just beautiful tools. Blockchain is a beautiful tool. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are beautiful tools, but we need to use them in the right way. And then you know, it's how beautiful would it be that you can own a part of the Bam Bam Beach Bar in Portugal, you know, and if we, if we sell for $100,000 drinks in, in, in July, that you get a small part of the revenue of those bars, and that you also get a small part to decide in which drinks that we serve, or which bets that we use, or which barkeeper, which cup size they should have when they work at the bar, whatever it is, wow. you know, <laughs> it's, that, that's what I try to do, but, um, you know, it will take some time. Of course, it's going to take time, but you have the idea already and you're pretty much executing and you've traveled all over the world trying to spread adoption and now that you like you have a physical place bam bam dow i am so excited to see where you take this because you are spearheading you're helping spearhead this revolution 100 percent um if it wasn't for people like you and your family just paving the way for people to not be afraid to do with you what you do and have that courage that you do it's absolutely amazing. And you're making history here. Like Bam Bam Dow, history. Yeah, for me, it's, you know, it's just a logical step. For me, it's just a logical step in a small of bar course. to show people that it's possible. And it is technically possible. We just need to do it. And it's there. And then people it, it can co-own it. It's, I think it's, it's very Genius. simple, but you need to take the time to do it. And, you know, and now I have the time. So my puber kids want to settle down for a year in Portugal so they can party over there and everything and I'll be fairer so I can focus on doing that stuff for a year now. Yeah, you gotta you gotta watch the kids. They're gonna wanna party, go out and you yeah. know, at least at least you have the bar though. So they, that's one place that they can hang out. The, 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 that's the, the difficult or the dangerous part of living in Portugal and not having inflation is that a shot in, in Albufeira still is one euro or a cocktail is still five euros. So you know, it's, it's really cheap to become drunk over here. So that's, that's a disadvantage of uh, not having inflation. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm happy that like you're still like innovating and you, you just, you don't give up, which is so amazing. You strongly, like what I, admire about you is that you strongly believe in Bitcoin, you strongly believe in this space as a whole, and you're doing everything you can, even though you're living the lifestyle you wanted, you're still pushing for adoption, and you're still pushing this initiative. And for that, I'm just, I'm ad I admire you. I really do. I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> nah, you know, you know, I admire you as well. I, I, I just Thank truly you. love what you're doing for the community. And I've been, I've, I've watched you from the beginning, like you said, you know, yeah. and um, I think we even did something with a really cool hoodie that, at yes. that time and everything. Um, you know, it's, it's, we need more people like you that will educate Generation Z. Um, I, I, I'm focused already on the older people because I'm an old dude, but you know, we, as a community, if you would ask me financially to go all in again, I would say yes. But even if it was financially bad, the people that I got to know by going all into Bitcoin and the people I got to go really well and got to work with and this, nobody can ever take that anymore for me. And I think this no. community is a kick-ass beautiful community. And I think we I should um, focus more on this building, focus more on educating and huddling instead of um, all the other stuff, which is also beautiful. But, you know, we, we have experience now to the 17 with the ICOs. Now we have a lot of NFT craze and there will always be people that lose money because of that. Um, you know, and, and I think slowly we need to understand, yeah, that, that the focus should be a little bit more on the revolution. Yeah. And at the same time also, you know, play full spirit, play with, with NFTs and all this stuff, um, but use them in a, in a, in a correct way. Um, and that's what I'm doing with that bar, you know, if you fractionalize something and there is really something physical on the beach that's backing it up, uh, that is cool. If it's just something empty or a promise, um, yeah, that's less cool in my opinion. 
<laughs> well, it's you're too long. No, you're good. You're the coolest <laughs> king on the block, Dee Dee. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to throw your socials in the chat one more time, but where can everyone find you? Shout out all the things you want to shout out. I, if they Google the Bitcoin family, they will find everything. I'm, I'm pretty active on Twitter. Didi Taihutu is my name. And if you want to really, 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 really find me, then you come to Portugal to the Bam Bam Beach here in Lagos and, and you will find me. We will drink together. We will chat about Bitcoin blockchain and life. Ooh. And then we will have a beautiful time. Absolutely. I just put the link to Didi's main Twitter, Bam Bam Beach Twitter and the Bitcoin family YouTube. And you guys upload daily, correct? I, I was uploading daily, but uh, this week I didn't upload daily. I think only three times because we were moving to this house and building the beach bar. So it was a little, a little bit busy. busy, but the future I'm going to do, I think, live streams from the beach bar as well with all the clients and just that ask awesome. questions. So that would be really cool, I think. Yeah, oh, a lot of plans. That would be so awesome. Yeah. Didi, please include me in your plans. I want to be a part of your plans. I really you can be my food. You can be my fourth daughter. Just fly over. All right. All right, guys. I have a flight to catch. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Didi, for the second time a little over a year later. And I appreciate yeah. you supporting me, your family supporting me. Your daughters are so sweet. And your wife is amazing and courageous as well. And just thank you for all that you do. I appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you to the amazing chat that has been here the whole time. Congrats to K Love Stonks for winning the ballet wallet. Um, I'm going to check my DM right after this hopefully you sent me your email so i can hook you up with the ballet team we have an amazing group of people here today thank you all so much for coming i appreciate you guys we have an amazing guest coming on next week so please if you enjoyed this video like subscribe comment after this video is over and make sure you have those post notifications on for next week because the shows are going to be absolutely zesty if you didn't think if you thought this week was zesty next week is going to be just as zesty maybe even more who knows the zest just <laughs> kicks up dd especially from when you were on man it's amazing. been it's been amazing from there the journey has been amazing and i have you back soon to up, keep me updated on all the things you guys are doing and just the history that you guys are genuinely making i wish all the best for you guys i have so much love for you and the bitcoin family so thank you again thank you everybody have an amazing day a happy fourth of july weekend and as always stay zesty my friends peace Good morning, crypto Twitter is missing. Crypto spreading crypto without you showing this benefit. So to my generation, shout out to all my people. Gen C needs to be included. It's really that simple. We are savage, amazed, possessed. Making money at the same time, spread peace. I feel empty if you don't include Gen Z. Better change the world, so y'all better get ready. Missing crypto, I'm never backing down. I got a wax account. You used to say it. So many NFTs, I think I lost count.